This is the TG Multi Setup Overview, where we go through all the steps to set up your TG Multi in your Stingray. First thing we need to do is set up the radio. Here we're using JRXG14. We want to start out with a brand new model. Make sure it's in helicopter mode. Single servo helicopter mode. In this case, the model actually does already have settings in there, but that just makes it easier, quicker for us to show you how to set it up. You want to start out, we'll get to dual rates and expos later. Travel adjusts, you want throttle 150 on both sides, aileron 100, elevator 100, and rudder 120. Pitch is 125 each side, everything else is left at default. Sub trims, you get zero on all the sub trims. Reversing, we'll get to later. Throttle curves, low stick at 30. You go up to half stick, you're at 67%. From half all the way up to 100, you stay at 67%. It's just flat across the top. Your low end 30 is your idle throttle setting. In stump mode, you're 67% all the way across, just straight across. Throttle hold, there's no curve. Your pitch curve. Your low end is 52% and it's just flat across all the way to half stick. And this is your idle pitch. It's 52 across all the way to half stick. And from half stick up it goes to 100. Back to 52 all the way across the bottom on your idle pitch. Throttle hold is exactly the same. Stump mode, you go from, z go from 0 to 100. From low stick at 0 at 100 at full stick. Throttle hold. You just want it turned as low as it will go, all the way off. And that's really it for the initial radio setup. Now we'll get more into the setting up the TG Multi. Let's start by taking the canopy off so we can get to the radio equipment. Here we have the receiver TG Multi and our front is facing left. We're going to use an XBUS JR receiver hooking to the TG Multi for other receiver types to see our other videos for the hookup method. To hook these two up, we need to start with a male to male plug. Plug it into the XBUS port of the receiver. Then it goes into port 1 of the TG Multi. This transfers both power and signal between the two. Then we want to plug our ESC, which is also our BEC power, into port 2. Once that's complete, we're going to move on to our port 3, 4, 5, and 6, which is where our rotor servos are plugged in. Port 3 is the front left rotor. Point 4 is the back left rotor. Port 5 is the back right rotor. Port 6 is the front right rotor. So we start by taking the front left rotor and plug it into port 3. Take the back left rotor, plug it into port 4. Then the back right rotor into port 5. front right rotor into port 6. Now I finished plugging all the servos in for the rotors. Got the ESC plugged in and then your plug between your TG Multi and your receiver. Now we're going to pick the radio type. We push in the P button while plugging in power. It'll status light will flash red and then a light come on, on indicating what receiver you're on. This is external receiver. Push the P button to go to S bus option. Push the button again to go to X bus option. X bus is what we're using, so you want to push P to get the status light to come on. And let go when it turns red, it's completed the setup. You can unplug power. Now we power on the transmitter and plug the power back in. You'll see the status light start flashing, indicating it's a seen the receiver and it's initializing. It'll speed up flashing near the end and then the servos will move. Next you can push P to go into the set neutrals function. 
the one the red lights indicating you're setting the front left rotor. Now as an overview, you start by setting neutrals in the front left rotor. And you can do it to other the other rotors by toggling between it. You can then go to the left rear rotor to set neutral. Then you go to the right rear rotor to set neutral. Toggle again with the rudder to go to the right front rotor. Now you're going to toggle set the front left one. You have to do all the rest also, but we're going to just start by showing you the front left one. And then you have to set the other three. So looking at the front left rotor, our goal is to have the servo arm at 90 degrees to the push rod. Not to the servo, but to the push rod. You can start, and if it's off by a lot, you can take the servo spline, the arm off the spline, and move it. If for small movements, you can get an aileron to shift the neutral of the servo itself. Once, you, once that's at 90 degrees, you can then look at the end, fold the blades back, and the blades should line up when they're at zero degrees. You can either adjust the push rod to get it to line up, or you can slightly tweak it using your aileron again to get your neutral on the zero blades at zero. You need to do this toggle with rudder to do this, the other three rotors and do set the same kind of neutral. Once you're done with neutrals, then you talk, push P to move on to the limit set. The red light's indicating the front left rotor is the one you start with. As an overview, you start with positives on all of them, then it goes to negatives on all of them. You're going to start with the front left rotor. The red light is a solid red. You toggle to the back left, toggle to the back right, toggle again to the front right. All the LEDs are solid. You toggle one more time. Now you're on negative on the front left, and it's a flashing light. Negative on the back left, flashing. Negative on the back right, flashing. Negative on the front right, light is flashing. Now we're back to the front left. Note if it's not positive when the light's solid, that means you need to give aileron to move the neutral to the other side of the, the curve so it ends up being positive when you're starting with a solid red light. Now looking on the end, we've got a pitch gauge on one of the blades. The other blade is folded down to act as a pointer. At positive 52 degrees, the blade should be parallel to the line you're trying to get to. Note here the two are, are crossing each other, but that's not 52 degrees. That's actually past 52 degrees. You need to angle the blade till it is parallel to the line you're trying to get to. Once you've got this set, you can use rudder to toggle but through the other three rotors to get to negative on this one. So now you're at negative 52. You want the rotor parallel with the line you're going for. Once this is set, you want to redo the same limit set for the other three rotors. Once you finish limit set, you now go into the mode where you're checking the pitch curve setting. So all we're doing here is confirming our pitch curve setting is correct. Go into pitch curve. First we want to do is check our limits. So we hit turn on stump mode and put the pitch curve all the way full down. The green light on the low pitch setting number 3 LED should come on and it does. For high pitch, the number 7 LED should come on when you're at the high pitch setting and it does. So it's correct. Our curve was correct. Now we go into normal mode, you're checking your idle pitch, which is the flat portion of the normal curve, and 3 and 7 come on like they should, so that is correct. St throttle hold should be the same. Next we move on to checking your throttle, throttle curve. This, is, this first number 4 LED is your throttle hold point, asking is this point correct? You flip throttle hold, and if it's correct, number 2 status LED should come on. In this case it is. If it's not, you may have to lower your throttle curve, throttle hold even more. Then you toggle with rudder to check your high throttle point. You raise the high throttle, and is this high throttle point correct? Yes, in this case it is. Next, you can toggle to check your idle throttle curve, which is the low point in normal mode. Is this point correct? If it's too high, it won't come on. In this case, it is at low, full low stick. It does come on, so it is correct. We have other videos to explain how to fix this in our troubleshooting mode if the LEDs are not coming on for you. Next we can toggle to our next thing which is gain selection. The TG Multi comes with set automatically an internal gain so you're not using the radio to change your gain settings. We recommend staying on this setting but if by accident you hit a switch during this when you're in this mode it may change to a different gain setting you can simply hit the aileron full and it'll go back to internal gain setting. So this is the end of your basic setup. Now we get into control directions. A quick way to test control directions or see control directions is to fold the blades forward. Note the back ones are the outside ones folded forward and the front ones are the inside ones folded forward. 
This is used to exaggerate the pitch slider movement. As the pitch slider moves up, you want the blades to move up also to exaggerate the control you see. You need to confirm that as you give positive collective, the blades are moving up. As you give forward elevated, the front blade should go down, the back blade should go up. As you give back elevated, the back blade should go down and the front blade should go up. Right aileron, the right blade should go down, the left blade should go up. Left aileron, the right blade should go up, the left aileron should go left blade should go down. For right rudder, these two blades should go up, the other two should go down. For left rudder, these two blades should go up, those two blades should go down. Now let's see what would happen if something is not correct in your control directions. Let's just uh, reverse an elevator. See here, if I'm holding forward elevator, those are going up, which you're not supposed to. The way to fix this is to simply reverse the control. So if, you're tr if the control is going the wrong way, go into your directions and reverse it in the controls in the radio. Now for, before we fly, we also want to deal with the control rate of the model, how fast it will respond to control inputs. You want to start with the dual rate around 75% on your aileron. Uh, some people may want to go as high as 85 or in other cases even 95 if you like a really fast control rate or even higher. But we recommend starting at 75%, get accustomed to the model and go up from there as your comfort level dictates. Same thing on the elevator, which started about 75%. Rudder, you want to start a little higher. Rudder, you're going to start at about 100%. If that's not enough, you can go up to 125 if that's still not enough control, you can go into your travel adjust and run your rudder up above 120. You can do the same thing for aileron and elevator too to get this, the whatever control rate feel you're looking for. Now that we've finished the basic set of the TG setup of the TG Multi, let's put the canopy back on, uh, and then we can finish any other little details we need before we get the Stingray flying.